Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you're watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipedream speed run. Now, before we showed you how to use Webflow and connect a contact form into an Airbase table. This time, we're going to be adding interactivity to an Airbase table using a button field type. That way you can kick off a workflow with a record in Airtable base and then trigger some kind of actions and then update the row at the very end. All right, so first things first, here's our scenario. We have an Airtable base that's just a list of users that have been affected by some kind of bug and their account has been messed up or they need some kind of manual work to the account and we want to track the status of our fix to this account and then we want to update it later once this has been performed. So we're going to add another column here. This adds interactivity to our Airtable base and it's the simple button type. So now we can open up a URL from a spreadsheet, which is perfect for integrating an Air, a uh, Pipedream workflow. But before we can create the field, we need to know the URL that we want to ping to start off a workflow. So let's go back to Pipedream and I have an empty workflow to start from. We're going to pick an HTTP interface to receive this request from Airtable. And we'll just start with the default response. Here is a URL that Pipedream gives us to accept events from Airtable. I'm gonna go back to Airtable and just copy in this URL to start and I'll create the field. Oh, I think you actually need to wrap in uh, strings in a formula. There we go, cool. So we have this basic open URL button. Maybe I'll just customize it a little bit. I wanna see that background style. Yeah, I wanna see a nice little button background, solid blue. There we go, looks more like a button. All right, now let's just open a sample URL just to make sure that Pipedream is receiving events. So I'm gonna click this button. That's good, we got the, the default Pipedream response back. We go back to our workflow, we could see a brand new event came in. But we have no way of knowing details about the record, it's just a static URL. Um, we don't know which user row we clicked on of, the, of these buttons. We need to add a little bit more identifying information. So I'm going to edit this field once again, and I'm gonna pass a query param under email. And you can just concatenate um, strings like this in an Airtable formula. Just add the name of the column, which is email. I'll save this, and I'll open the URL once again, and we can see at the very top URL, it added john at example.com because that's the current row I clicked on. If we go back to Airtable and just Go back to pipe dream excuse me and choose the new event at email equals john at example.com under the query params we can see we grab the email perfect so now we can get the rec the full record from airtable if we want to say we need to get more information from our database we can go to airtable we can get that same record we can uh, list records and then we can choose our account, which I've already connected my Airtable account. It will automatically retrieve our base. So you can just click the base that we were working on and even the table. And now this fancy little filter by formula field will allow us to use yet again another formula to filter. So it'll say email equals the query email parameter. Click test. And this will query our same table and return the full records, not just the email. We can see the status and the name and we can do all sorts of other things. So in this mock example, what you could do is send an email or you could actually perform some API calls against your app to perform some manual actions. You can do anything really with a, with a Pipedream workflow. But at the very end of all those operations, you want to, want to update our record back to say that, okay, that operation completed and there's no other action to perform on this user. So what we'll do is we'll use Airtable once again and we'll update the record. So it's a nice little pattern to do after you've completed the operation and successful. You want to let the database know that the status has been changed. So you choose our table once again and the record ID conveniently is from our list records up here. We can choose the ID field from the return value. We'll copy this path, go back down here and paste it. And then under the name, email notes, say you don't wanna change all that, but the status is the important one. 
we want to change it to done, which the async options down here in our, in our uh, pre-built action makes it so much easier. Rather than looking by that option ID, we can just see that this one in particular is done and we can test it. So now, hopefully, the record will be updated. We'll go back here and look at that. It sets to, it's set to done. We do the same thing with the other ones. Open URL, go back here, and it kicks off the workflow. Oh, I gotta deploy the workflow first, sorry. Let's deploy it. And now we can go back here, open, set to done, and set to done. So that's it. That's a basic example of a pattern to connect Airtable to Pipedream to create an actual small usable app that has a UI, a database, and some interactivity to actually perform actions. I mean, what I think is really cool about this is you can add as many buttons as you would like, and that would be, that would be a specific action on this row in your database, your Airtable. And essentially you can create a whole small app just by using two services. I hope this was really helpful to you. If you have any more ideas for us to do on a Pipedream speed run, just let me know. But also I should let you know that we've re just released the Pipedream University series, which I'm very excited about. I've spent the past few months working on it. Uh, you can visit pipedream.com university to see our full course and all of the videos that takes you from knowing nothing about Pipedream workflows to actually building custom components all in one series. And yes, it is 100% free to you to watch and to follow along. Each video is only five minutes or so, and you can watch on your lunch break, you can watch it while you're on the bus or on the train. Please do not do it while you're driving. But otherwise, have a great day. Thanks for watching.